Hello friends, my name is Dr. Priyanka. Today I am going to gross a specimen of left bite composite dissection. You can see this is the upper alveolus, this is the lower alveolus. The upper alveolus measure 3 cm in length, lower alveolus measures 3.5 cm in length. This is left side because you can orient the specimen. This is the condyle, this is the upper, this is the lower alveolus. So, uh, grossly, a tumor is identified in the retromolar trigon area. You can see, I am pointing the tumor. This is the ulcerative tumor in the RMT region. So, we have first of all measured the upper alveolus length, lower alveolus length. Now, we'll, we will measure the tumor size in two dimension. That is approximately 1.8 by 1 centimeter third dimension i will measure later on when i will chop the tumor and i will measure the third dimension with maximum thickness the base is as you all see is formed by lateral soft tissue distance of tumor from anterior mucosal cut margin is 1.1 centimeter from medial mucosal cut margin is 1.6 centimeter from superior lateral mucosal cut margin is you can measure the tumor distance like this this is 2.5 cm now anterior the, now, now the posterior mucosal cut margin is we have to measure the closest dimension this is the posterior mucosal cut margin which is approx 1.1 cm so first of all we will take the sections from the all the margins so that no floater comes in the margin this is the anterior because all margin should be radial if the distance is far away if the distance is closer to the tumor distance if closer to the margin then we will have to take the radial section with tumor this is the anterior mucosal we have inked the specimen beforehand only so no need to ink the margin again this is the posterior mucosal posterior mucosal cut margin now comes the median mucosal cut margin Now comes the lateral, superior lateral mucosal cut margin. This is the superior lateral mucosal cut margin that I have taken from the upper alveolus mucosa. Now we have to measure the distance from the mandibular bony cut margins also. So anterior mandibular bony cut margin is 3 cm anterior upper alveolus bony cut margin is 2 cm this is the uh, segmental mandibulectomy that's why we can see this the condyle is not attached with the tumor with the specimen so this is the posterior bony cut margin mandibular bony cut margin which is approx 4 cm in dimension now we will chop the specimen and see the tumor and take the section with tumor with maximum thickness we have taken the margin as anterior posterior superior lateral and medial mucosal cut margin now we will chop the specimen chop the tumor take the section of the tumor with maximum thickness This is a tumor with maximum thickness that I have taken. This is the tumor with maximum thickness. I will ink the lateral soft tissue later on to, to measure the distance from the base. 
another two more section we will take remember maximum thickness tumor should be taken so that staging is correctly given in pathological staging system we follow tnm agcc 8th edition staging system so maximum thickness is very important and the tumor size is also very important third dimension i will tell you later this is a tumor with later soft tissue so these two are the section with maximum thickness along with later soft tissue so maximum thickness of the tumor is this is the section this is the tumor part you can see the growth is there this is blackish in color grayish white blackish in color this is approximately thickness is 1.3 cm in maximum dimension and distance from lateral soft tissue is measured like this this is approximately 0.7 cm in dimension so tumor with maximum thickness along with base minimum 3 to 4 section should be taken for with tumor with maximum thickness so that the maximum thickness documentation is there and we can we are able to see the perineal invasion easily now this is the specimen along with mnd which is attached with the main specimen you can see this is the level 1b showing the salivary gland so i will cut the specimen like this i will remove the mnd part later on i will give the mandibular cut margin also this is anterior mandibular cut margin this is the posterior mandibular cut margin this is the upper alveolus mandibular uh, cut margin now i will gross the mnd part so along with the salivary gland we will remove the level 1b lymph nodes so this is the level 1b lymph node we will measure the salivary gland size the salivary gland measure 3.5 by 2.5 by 1.5 cm we will cut the salivary gland into two half and look for any tumor if it is invaded by the tumor or not this is all the normal salivary gland part we will give the section from the representative section from the salivary gland this is the salivary gland now we will cross the lymph node along with the salivary gland which is counted as level 1b lymph node so this is how we will cross the lymph nodes so this is the largest lymph node we will bisect the lymph node so sorry this is not the lymph node you can see this is the muscle part which i was assuming the lymph node on cut section i can see that this is not the lymph node yeah this is the lymph node along level 1b minimum 14 lymph nodes are required for head and neck mnd specimen these are the criteria for lymph node along the in the head and neck specimens so this is the rest of the mnd which is came which has came with the sternocleidomastoid muscle so i will cut the sternocleidomastoid muscle first which is perfectly normal no involvement by tumor in the sternocleidomastoid muscle is there you can see the other head lymph nodes along with the rest of mnd this is the lymph node part this is one this is two lymph node this is the third lymph node if the lymph node is bigger in size kindly bisect it into two and the cut section one part is submitted for processing this is how we will cross the mnd part 
along with the salivary gland we have to label the lymph node as level 1b and rest of the mnd specimen is labeled as lymph nodes along rest of mnd so we so have to see we chop the specimen so that we get we get a minimum 14 lymph nodes as the criteria is there for hadenic specimen of minimum 14 lymph nodes this is the blood vessel now this is the lymph node i have submitted also this is the blood vessel lymph nodes are adhered with the sternocleidomastoid muscle so we have to properly gross the specimen so that no lymph node is left behind and we get minimum 14 lymph nodes so the only muscle part you can see we really chop it you see that no lymph node is there adhered with the main specimen you see this is the lymph node which is adhered with the sternocleidomastoid muscle see grossly cut surface is also grayish white in appearance we will cut it into two half and submit the whole of the lymph node along with the capsule capsule submission is very important we will submit it entirely bisect it and submit it as we are feeling that it's the node is positive so capsule submit submission is very important as perinodal extension is very important for tm staging of the head and neck cancer if the single node is positive and the it is showing perinodal extension then the staging changes to n to a and the node is positive and it is not showing the single node positive and not showing perinodal extension then it is labeled as n1 so that's why we have to sub gross the nodes in such a way that capsule remain intact with the nodes so this is how i have grossed the specimen no lymph nodes are left behind only the muscle part is left so uh, a is a tumor with maximum thickness and later soft tissue which is forming the base b is also the same c is also the same now comes the d part which is anterior mucosal cut margin e part e section is posterior mucosal cut margin f section is superior mucosal cut margin and g section is medial mucosal cut margin and h section is lymph nodes level 1b lymph nodes along with the main specimen and this is the lymph node which have by which we have bisected and submitted is entirely and these are the rest of the lymph nodes which are submitted in 3 to 4 sections so minimum 14 lymph nodes criteria are required and now we will take the margins this is anterior mandibular cut margin underlying bone we will cut and see whether the tumor part and underlying bones means the bone beneath the tumor part so we have to check whether underlying bone is involved or not we have to specify it grossly also this is the way and this is the rmt area we can see the bone is not involved grossly if the bone is involved grossly the the blade of the your scalpel easily penetrate the bone you can see it is not penetrating the underlying bone so underlying bone is not involved by the tumor grossly you have to mention it and we have to take the representative section from the rmt area of the underlying bone for documentation of purpose whether the underlying bone is involved or not i will take the section by using a bone cutter later on this is how we have grossed the specimen and by after grossing the specimen just see to that you draw a well labeled diagram this is the a section 
this is the tumor part this is the later soft tissue so tumor b is also the same you have to draw the sections like as they are taken grossly this is the all the tumor with maximum thickness and base d is anterior mucosal cut margin e is posterior mucosal cut margin f is superior lateral mucosal cut margin g is medial mucosal cut margin h is lymph nodes along level 1b this is salivary gland and two lymph node that we have crossed now comes the eye part which is we have the cross bisected the same single lymph node one lymph node bisected then i then after that j part in which we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 nodes then j after that k part in which we have four to five nodes this is how we have to draw a well labeled diagram after grossing so that during processing the processor the lab technician knows what the tumor size is and mix up is less likely if we can match the diagram with the block that is formed later on so this is about the left bite composite section that we have received today upper alveolus lower alveolus length is required tumor is involving the which region is required rmt region the tumor also what type of tumor is there it is also proliferative or also infiltrative very important document measuring this centimeter why it is important i will tell you later on when i will explain the microscopy part of this case anterior mucosal median mucosal cut margin superior lateral mucosal cut margin and lateral mucosal cut margin along with bony cut margin which we have drawn all sections are radial so i will land measurement and which is grossly un uninvolved and later on we have to uh, count the lymph nodes and specify how many lymph nodes are grossed how much what is the lymph node size maximum tum size of the lymph node which is approximately 1.8 by 1 cm cut surface is gray white in appearance you have to specify in gross thank you if you like the uh, grossing and if you like the grossing videos please kindly like share and subscribe my channel so that i can upload the later on the more videos of grossing part as well as the microscopy part of this case thank you very much